Hello, smattering of people. Um, I'm Greg Kick. I work on Dagger 2. Um, sort of did the original fork from Dagger 1 from Square. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, kind of just take a quick moment and present, you know, what Dagger 2 is, the mechanics of it, particularly from a code generation perspective. Um, Uh-oh. The thing stopped working. Why did the thing start? There we go. I guess we're going to have to click. So code generation, we're going into monospaced font mode uh, because a the thing that differentiates Dagger from you know pretty much every other bit of dependency injection is the fact that it generated code and that simplifies things a lot in ways that are hopefully helpful for the user. So we will you know sort of walk through why it is what it is or you know how it does what it does. Um, DI from a very high level. Since we're talking about generated code, we're not going to give you high-minded conversations about Hollywood principles and things like that. Uh, that I find a lot of time do more harm than good. DI, basically just make a zero argument factory method for any type that you want. Uh, that sounds perhaps a little abstract, so let's talk about what that means. Um, these are the zero argument factory methods. We have an interface called provider and we just wanna make sure that you can, for any type that you can imagine, say, I want a string, get me a string, I want an object, get me an object, I want a foo, a bar, a baz, give me one of those. By implementing provider, our factories look like that. So what does that mean? If you have a class called foo, in this very simple example that doesn't do anything, you throw at inject on it in the normal way, and now here's where Dagger goes to work generating zero arg factories. It implements provider and it generates that code for you. That's really unremarkable because turning a zero argument constructor into a zero argument factory is not super interesting but we can get slightly more complicated. What happens if you have dependencies? This is where the dependency injection bit comes in. How do we turn that into a zero argument factory? Well, it's a lot of ways still the same. This is perhaps a little small, but hopefully you can see it, uh, that you just say, okay, well, in order to have a zero argument factory for, you know, bar, I depend on a zero argument factory for foo, and we know that we're capable of making one of those. Um, and then we can implement that get method that just says, you know, return new var, uh, excuse me, return new bar, and then give me back the foo that I got from that zero argument factory. We don't care about how, you know, foo showed up. All we know is that we care about bar, bar requires foo, and we just delegate to factories all the way down. And you can do the same trick for methods. Um, if you don't have a constructor, but instead you have like a uh, factory or like a static factory method on, you know, say baz and baz takes a bar, you can do a little bit of work that requires a little bit of dependency injection specific API, um, but it's basically the same principle. Instead of at inject, you say provides, and then you call bar.create. Um, just writing that provides method is a simple delegation, a little more boilerplate from the calling side, but that's how you sort of express the same principle, and you get basically the same factory. You get you know a factory that gives you bases, it takes bar because that's the argument to that method. Does the exact same invocation, but instead of saying down at the bottom return you know new baz, it says okay call that provides method that I made over there. Pretty straightforward, and you can do that for any type. You can do that same mechanical step in generated code as many times as you know need be. Uh, but what good does that do us? That's not a particularly useful tool to make factories and factories and factories. How do we make this work for us? Well, you, uh, you just say at the very top level, all right, here's an interface. This interface enumerates the types I actually want. Uh, in this case, we're gonna say we want Baz. We know from the code that we just showed that Baz requires a bar, bar requires a foo, all the way down, but all we really care about from the perspective of our application is give me a Baz. And we know that in order to do that, we had to include this module. So we have just a little bit of declaration. And then we say dagger, generate the implementation of that interface. And it does. Um, you know, it kind of does sort of the thing that you would expect. It string together all of these little factories in a lovely tree, or actually a lovely dag. That's why it's called dagger, fun fact. Um, which in and of itself is questionably interesting, but that bit. That's the hard part, that little part in bold where it does all of those factories in exactly the right order.
we have a nice linear structure of one thing depends on another thing, it depends on another thing. But now imagine that you had a complicated structure in which, you know, any number of things can depend on any number of other things. The entire magic of Dagger is that it figures out the order that you need to initialize these factories in order to create your application. And all of that shuffling requires no thought on your part. You just say, here's the things that I require at any given type. And then Dagger figures out how to wire them all together for you. All right, neat trick. Um, I can, you know, a little bit of background on sort of how we've seen this in practice. Uh, it actually scales, this strategy that we've shown, scales to huge dependency graphs. Um, in Google, in addition to running a whole bunch of Android apps out there in the world, uh, it also runs search. All of, you know, the front end for web search, the, the you know, 10 blue links and all of the things that, you know, come. And it's actually a massive application, um, as you perhaps might imagine. Uh, we've actually run into uh, issues here and there where the sheer amount of byte code in you know, all of those initializations of factories and et cetera uh, exceeds how much you can put into a single method. This really does like sort of scale out to the, the very, very large, um, and it works pretty well. Uh, the complicated structures of you know, figuring out how to wire everything together is managed automatically. So that means that if you change your dependency structure, there's no refactoring on your part, or you know, at least not from the perspective of wiring together all those factories. Um, Error-prone patterns that we used to have, at least in search, are now detected at compile time. Like we do a little bit of nullness checking, depending on the presence or absence of nullable annotations. We make sure that there are no cycles in your dependencies, uh, things that otherwise would have been you know, null pointer exceptions and you know, stack overflow errors at runtime are now detected at compile time. And in your very large applications, another thing that ends up sort of you know, coming out in the wash is that dead code disappears from the app completely. You don't have a giant runtime bucket where you're putting everything into a hash map, keyed on class literal or whatever it is. If you don't use a type in your dependency graph, it's just not part of the de generated dependency graph. Uh, so huge swaths of like features that aren't enabled or anything just drop out of the application. But there's always a catch, right? You know, what, what's the catch? We have tons and tons and tons of generated code. Well, that is the problem. We have a lot of bulk where we might conceptually not need it. The very first example of just invoking a constructor for foo, all of a sudden got an extra wrapper class. That thing got a bunch of extra methods. At runtime, whenever you create the component implementation, there's objects that are generated. We don't like bulk. Um, not so much a problem on the server side, big problem on the Android side. And Android is obviously one of our, our primary targets for Dagger. So we start talking about optimization. How can we make this thing better? And the very first thing we did is we said, well, you know, we're the implementers. Um, if you think about annotation processors at a very sort of abstract level, it's kind of a compiler for a kind of a language. Uh, and compiler optimizations are things that we know and love from you know, years and years and years of computer science. So let's go to work. And you know, a, a good example of this is just inlining the calls. Um, Dagger does this right now at head if you download the latest version for places where it can detect that you can, you know, sort of just, you asked for a foo, so yeah, we'll just give you a foo instead of calling a factory for a foo, as long as everything's accessible and et cetera, et cetera. And so if you take this sample code and actually compile it against what's happening in Dagger today, uh, you will get something closer to that, um, where it says, okay, no, no, just, you know, call the provides method, call the constructors, do that work. Uh, I actually ran an experiment in which we had a graph with thousands and thousands of calls, um, and we inlined 100% of the, uh, there was not a single generated factory present in the compiled application, and magically in Android, if you run ProGuard over it with a sufficient number of rounds, Dagger disappeared from the application entirely because of this optimization. Um, you know, even the component interface was gone, the Dagger component implementation, there was just one call site, and it all got inlined right exactly the way that we hope it would. Um, we have ongoing work, it's not perfect yet, we don't optimize everything away, you know, perfectly, uh, but we continue to make progress on that, but that's the type of thing where we just look at the compiler and we try to do a little bit better. There's also things you can do sort of on the, on the caller side, and we try to, you know, we try to do things for you as best as we can most of the time, but sometimes 
it's just, you know, we have to make the suggestion that on the, you know, on the user side, there are things that you can do to make your life a little bit easier. For example, remember this module from early in the talk? Uh, well, no, you don't. You actually remember this module. Uh, the difference being static. Static makes a big difference. Um, the funny thing about instance methods, you need an instance to invoke it on. Um, go figure, right? Uh, so you imagine in that generated component, you would actually have to have an instance of my module in order to be able to uh, invoke that method, which means that you have to create an instance or have it passed. You have to hold a reference to it, then you have to pass that around to invoke the provides method, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you make that static, all of a sudden, you know, fields disappear, um, invoke virtual calls get replaced with invoke static calls, which at least for Android, the developer documentation claims can be 15 to 20 percent faster on mobile devices. Um, and you know, there's nothing really we can do as an annotation processor uh, to make this work better or not for you, but except for inform you of the fact that if you think about the way the generated code has to work and that you can you know, invoke static methods with a lot more freedom than you can invoke instance methods because you don't need the instance, well, that's, a, that's a, a good place to start. And actually, sort of, if you're using Dagger and you start poking through sort of your generated code and looking for cases like this, you can shave off a lot of bytecode, a lot of runtime overhead, a lot of allocated objects doing exactly this type of work. And the Dagger documentation at, uh, um, like the user guide, sort of points out a handful of patterns like this. Finally, this is our optimization of last resort. Every once in a while, we just have to give you a better way to express the thing that you want to do that Dagger understands. What does that mean? Well, imagine you just want simple delegation. Oh, I apologize, that became very tiny. Um, the, the example up here is basically, imagine you have a login activity presenter. Uh, that login activity presenter as a login activity presenter impl. This is a very common you know, thing to have your interface implementation separation. Well, somewhere you need to tell Dagger, okay, well, in order to, you know, whenever I ask for a presenter, give me the presenter impl. And traditionally what you would do, all the way back to you know, Dagger 1, this was the only mechanism, is you'd have a provides method. That provides method would ask for the impl and then return it. You've just strung together a pattern of delegation. What's the problem? Why do we care? Uh, that is a method that has to be invoked. We don't know, as an annotation processor in you know, Dagger code generating land, what the implementation of a method looks like. We can't know that you're only doing simple delegation. Uh, so there's you know, a limit to what types of optimizations we can do. So we gave you an alternative API. Rather than saying, okay, here's a provides method and here's the implementation that just does the delegation, we have a binds method. And binds method is basically shorthand for simple delegation. Um, we have an abstract method, because again, method bodies don't matter to annotation processors, so you know, we don't even need to bother with it. And now, that abstract method has the exact same method signature, but by saying binds, it says simple delegation. What that means is, in the generated code, we can say, all right, implementation, you're gonna have a provider just like you always did, but anytime you want the uh, login activity provider, we do a you know, relatively safe cast um, that says, okay, just use the provider for the implementation. We know that's safe, we've verified that. We've used the language to, you know, the language that we've constructed out of annotations to declare a construct that now Dagger knows is optimizable in this way. You get fewer objects, you get fewer method invocations, you get simpler delegation, you get a whole lot of um, benefit that you couldn't otherwise have because the thing that you were trying to do is not expressible in a way that you know, the previous API allowed. So this is thus far pretty much the only time where we've resorted to having to give you know, Dagger users a new API. We try to do as much as we can for you without having to have you change your code. But on the flip side, the nice thing is there is a tool called error prone out in the world. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. Error prone is a static analysis and refactoring tool that will find patterns, one of which is out of the box, go download error prone, and it will search for you know, dagger optimizations that it can do. And it will suggest that you replace provides methods with binds methods automatically, and it basically spits out a patch that you can apply to your code base. So, you know, we, we've tried to make it, we've tried to keep it as automatic as we could, but, you know, not, not as perfectly as we'd like with a new API. So that's the, that's the quick overview. That's the, you know, sort of a um, 
high level version of what Dagger is and does and how we uh, you know, try to keep the generated code nice and happy and healthy. Um, any more questions, reach out to the GitHub project, reach out to you know, the various users groups. Thank you. Mm -hmm.